so excited to talk about all the books. Yes, I'm still in the slump. <laughs> Nine books ahead of schedule. It is so cute. <laughs> if I just got my Kindle now, my slump would be over. Hi guys, welcome back to my channel and welcome if you're new. I hope you're all doing well and welcome back to my first quarterly wrap up. I physically cannot believe that we are already into quarter two of the year. How has the first part of the year flown by so quickly? I can't believe it, but I'm not going to dwell on it too much because I feel like everyone says this in TBRs, in quarterly wrap ups, in just any type of video. The years go quicker and quicker as we grow up. It's scientifically proven and now I'm almost 27. The years are going very, very quickly and it's like that saying, the days are long but the weeks and years are flying by. So I'm really just trying to like live in the moment right now, which does kind of like lead me on to, yes, I'm still in a slump. Let's just put that out there. I have probably been in a slump since like the end of February and kind of like it's come through all of March, even though I have read a few books in March, which also will go on to, and I'm still struggling to fit reading and want to fit reading into my usual daily and nightly routines into April as well. So without further ado, let's just hop into the first thing, which will be the stats. So we're gonna go through a lot of things in this video. So grab a cup of tea, get cozy. And I'm just gonna go through the first three months of my reading and my reading journal in this video. So without further ado, let's hop into it. The first thing we will be doing is stats. So I track everything that I read via core pile, which creates nice bar graphs and pie charts and everything for me. So I'll be popping a few of those on screen for you to visually see kind of how my reading has gone in the first three months of 2020. And as you can see, January started off so strong for me. The New Year vibe really took me all the way through January and I read a total of nine books, my best reading month so far in 2024. And then as you can see, it has slowly <laughs> decreased over the last couple of months. In February, I read a total of seven. And then by the end of March, I had read a total of four. So we can see a steady decline in total books. And that also reflects on a number of pages. So in January, I read a total of 2,663 pages. In February, I read a total of 1,857 pages. And then in March, even though I read less books, I still read 1,760 pages. So I must have read longer books in March to equivalent to that amount of pages. Whereas in February, I clearly read shorter books and also read more audio books in February as well. Whereas March, I just read physically. And that easily moves me on to the different formats I've read so far this year. I've read 57.1% physically, which is a total of 12 books out of the total 20-ish books I've read so far. 23.8% of those have been audiobooks, which is a total of five. I started off the year strong with audiobooks, usually reading one a week during my commute to and from work on Tuesdays, Wednesdays and Thursdays, and then finishing off at the weekend doing, doing chores with Mark. I do really want to get back into the habit of doing this because it does bump up my kind of weekly and monthly reading quite a lot if I do add that additional book on to my weekly stats or my monthly stats because I read an audiobook per week plus than anything that I read physically. So I do want to get back into that habit and I'm slowly I think in April trying to get back on that habit and am um, I feel like seeing some progress but I'm not gonna like get too ahead of myself I'm taking it slow I'm very much still in my slump or trying to come out of it I'm praying that it leaves me soon because I just want to be able to binge all the books on my physical TBR like <laughs> I want spring to be a really good kind of quarter for me in terms of reading and then finally I've read a total of 9.5% as ebooks and that has definitely increased since last year because I think last year I actually only read across the entire year across 365 days only one ebook and I've now read two yay um, and that is because I am doing my kindle countdown series on my channel where I'm trying to get rid of my entire ebook collection on my ibooks account before I then treat myself to a kindle I now have the money for a kindle I am just waiting patiently before ordering my kindle I know which one I want and all that fun stuff I'm just waiting because I know that if I order a kindle I will then want to use it and I will not read the other books on my ibooks account so I'm really trying to get my ibooks account down to zero or like at least less than five uh, before ordering my Kindle. But that is very, very exciting. And that is the reason why my ebook kind of percentage is up versus last year because I'm just trying to read those books. And I definitely feel like I'm more in an ebook kind of phase of my life because of this little challenge. Uh, versus last year as well. So overall, my yearly goal on Goodreads is always 50 books. And I'm really, really happy to say I am still nine books ahead of schedule. 
but I always start off really strong and then have a dip in the middle and then like peak at the end of the year. This is very much an all pattern for me. I always come out the doors really, really strong in January and then because I've read so much and I've like really overexerted myself in reading, I always dwindle a little bit in the next couple of months. And then usually by April, I'm out of my slump and I have like a really good April, May. June's my birthday, so I end up then having a little bit of a slump. And then I'll host every this on or something in the late summer months. It'll boost me back up and then I'll be in a slump because I've read so much. And then I'll be on a downward slide like October, November and I'll pick myself back up for December to kind of like finish off the year strong. That tends to be the pattern and it's happening once again this year. I'm really hoping I can get out of my slump sooner rather than later. But in total, I have read 21 books so far today, which I can't complain about. Yes, I'm in a slump. Yes, I'm not reading as much, but 21 books is still absolutely incredible. I always kind of like do compete with myself on how much I've read the previous year or I might even compete with other people like my peers and other booktubers but 21 books is still like more or like double the amount that people would read across an entire year and I've read that within three months so I'm very happy with what I've read so far and that leads me perfectly on to the top three books I've read so far in 2024 and I'm really really excited to talk to you about the five stars I've had so far this year. Can anyone take any guesses to what these three books are before I start talking about them? I have only had two five stars so far this year. One is a 4.5, so I'll start with that one first, but still a really, really close five star. I just, it didn't give me that like five star feeling, but I just absolutely love the plot. I love the characters. I love the storyline. And it's just, I think I perfectly read it at the right time. And for that reason, it is one of my favorite books I've read so far to date this year. And that is The Burnout by Sophie Kinsella. The Party Crasher by Sophie Kinsella actually made my top books of last year. So I'm not surprised that I love this one as well, but I do prefer this one. Party Crasher, I'm out of breath. I'm so excited to talk about all the books. Um, the Party Crasher got a four. So this one has definitely like upped it. Um, and I just absolutely love this book. It basically, blah, 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 blah. This book basically follows our main character, something and Flynn, Sasha and Flynn. I knew it began with S. I was thinking Sophie. I was like, no, it's not Sophie. Let me check. Sasha and Finn. And it mainly follows Sasha, who is very much burnt out of work. Everyone keeps leaving. And then therefore, instead of hiring more people to help her with the workload, she ends up just having to add on to her own workload, her own to-do list. And she gets to a point where she ends up just running out because her managers just don't understand the pressure that she's been put under to do everyone else's tasks without hiring new people. So she ends up running out, so stressed, so overwhelmed, so very much not feeling herself. She ends up going to a nunnery to try and join a convert um, they don't accept her and they actually call her old manager and her manager tries to take her back instead Sasha ends up running away from not only the manager but also the convert and ends up running into a brick wall she ends up having a bump on her head ends up in hospital and the doctors give her some time off work she ends up going back to the seaside town where she grew up and spent many summers and now the hotel there has been run down but it's the only place that is open off season so she ends up staying there the only other person staying there is a guy called finn who's also been signed off work for other reasons that you'll soon discover and it's basically about sasha dealing with a lot of her past trauma her dad has passed away <clears throat> as well as like rediscovering herself what her passions are now that work isn't in the equation and then Finn comes along and he's also dealing with his own things but they really do help each other out in a platonic way um, and I just absolutely loved it it was humorous it was relevant it was relatable I just really really enjoyed this book the writing was incredible the friendships the romances the relationships and just the whole kind of cast of this story were just really really special to me and I did really really enjoy this book so highly recommend this one I gave it a 4.5 stars and the next two, one fantasy book and one romance got a five stars from me. And you guys know if you watch my like beginning videos of the year, I'm really, really trying to get into fantasy this year. And the fact that a fantasy has made my top book so far this year is a character growth moment that I never thought, never saw coming, but it has happened. And it's no surprise. Um, it is a very popular book. A lot of people have also rated it five stars. So I'm definitely not the only one. Divine Rivals by Marekka Brass. <laughs> this book was so cute. This is what I love about fantasy. This is the perfect book for me. Romance, relationships with a little bit of fantasy. It's like my perfect cup of tea when it comes to trying to find fantasy books that are kind of like up my alley. I'm not a high fantasy reader. I don't want a lot of world building. I don't want a lot of plot with like 
fairies and demons and I don't know I just want cute romances in a fantasy world and that is exactly what Divine Rivals is it basically follows two work rivals Iris and Rowan they're work rivals they both work at the same newspaper and they both want the same job position when one of them gets it over the other the other one ends up leaving that company and ends up going to work for the rival newspaper um, as part of a war correspondent role and she ends up going to the front line to start writing about this war that's going on between two gods which is the fantasy element of this book which isn't very good <laughs> the main kind of like selling point for me of this book is the relationship the kind of back and forth between these two main characters as well as kind of like this magical typewriter situation that keeps going on because this world is a fantasy world the gods have kind of made some of the objects in this world some of the buildings magical um, and these two characters end up owning magical typewriters and that just means they can communicate with each other via typewriters even if they aren't in the same country or world or whatnot they can kind of like just communicate by sending their letters through the wardrobes of their kind of relative locations um etc and yeah it's just a really precious story about love and romance and a little bit of fantasy um which is like perfect the second book wasn't as good this one was like a solid five stars i just wanted to keep reading it and i just couldn't because i was really busy the weekend i did read it i have vlogged it so i'll link it up above and down below if you want my like in the moment thoughts and feelings and my reaction to the ending of divine rivals is also in that vlog so i'll link it up above if you're interested in watching that um but the second one wasn't as good the first one definitely is superior and I definitely feel like because the fantasy world wasn't really flushed out as much it could have just been a standalone fantasy which would have done me just fine. So this is my first five star of 2024. And my most recent and last five star of 2024 is a adult romance back in my comfort zone, back in what I excel at, back in what I love most. And Chloe, you will be proud of me. The book that you gifted me for once has been a five star. <laughs> me and Chloe have very different kind of reading tastes and we gift each other books. Some off our wish list, some not on our wish list. And sometimes Chloe gets it wrong, sometimes she gets it right, and she got it right this time. Practice Makes Perfect by Sarah Adams is a five star. Oh my god, it was so cute. This book has fake dating, it is kind of like grumpy sunshine, kind of like best friend's brother, but not really a brother, it's kind of like best friend's bodyguard, and it basically follows our main character Annie, who is very much a virgin, she's never had like a serious proper relationship, and she's on a very awkward date, and the romantic interest walks in with his date, called Will, who is the bodyguard of her best friend, who is a famous pop star, and he ends up rescuing her from this date because it's just going so awfully, and Amelia, Anna's best friend, aka the pop star for the bodyguard, end up being like, you just need some practice. I know someone who's really good. He's not looking for anything mm, like real or serious. It's fine. He's totally down to do it. I'm going to put you in contact with Will, um, who will help you with some dating tips and tips and tricks. And then obviously the fake dating turns into a real thing. And it is so cute. <laughs> so those are the top books I've read so far this year really does sum up my reading taste like an adult steamy kind of romance a fantasy with really good character development and character relationships and then like a wooden woman's chiclet this really does sum up my reading taste right now and i'm very happy with the books i've rated highly so far this year so we'll just stay up here to go through the amount of stars i've given out so far this year and i am sad that i've only given out two five stars but Overall, if you look at my pie chart, I've actually given very high ratings so far this year. I'm definitely picking up books I know I'm going to enjoy, which is really, really good. So just to break it down, I've had one 2.5 star, which I can't even remember what it was, which is not very concerning because I don't really care clearly about that book, but I physically from the top of my head can't remember what that 2.5 star was. Anyway, one three star, six 3.5s, six four which is like really good three four point fives and two five stars so i've had a really really good reading year so far even if it has taken a slower pace in the latter half of the first quarter and as i've already said those three of my top books do really sum up my reading taste and so far i've read 42.9 percent romances 28.6 percent temporary kind of woman's chiclet 9.5 percent have been non-fiction i used to always try and read a lot of non-fiction i still do love it as a genre mainly kind of like the sub-genre of like memoirs but i haven't really been gravitating towards non-fictions at the minute but the genre i'm happy to say <laughs> has definitely bumped up from last year i've read so far 19% fantasy. 19% of my pie chart is fantasy? 
I would never have seen a day. Never seen a day. And out of the five series I've started so far this year, two of which I've finished, both of those are being a fantasy series, having a finished fantasy series. Like yes, Divine Rivals was only a duology, so I'll take less credit for that because it's only two books. But I did also finish the Caravelle trilogy by Stephanie Garber this year as well, finishing off with Finale. So I'm calling that a massive success in my own personal opinion. And obviously reading more fantasy and finding what I like in fantasy was one of my goals this year. So let's do a little quarterly check-in of my reading goals and flip through my reading journal. So as you have seen many times, this is my reading journal for 2024. I do not like it because it does not lie flat, but I'm willing to stick with it. <laughs> so we'll go straight into my reading goals and reflect on those. I'm on track and well underway at reading 50 books this year. Like I said, I've read 21, being nine books ahead of schedule. Find a new genre I love. I definitely think that's going to be fantasy, which I kind of did predict at the beginning of the year. So as a little subgenre of that, I wanted to read 10 fantasy and I've totally read three. The first one being Finale by Stephanie Garber and then the other two being Divine Rivals and Rufus Bows by Rebecca Ross. I have managed to read three out of the, I think, like 11 or 18 books off my iBooks TBR. The cross means a DNF, so I attempted to read it, but didn't quite manage to finish it fully. But I know I'm never going to return to it, and that's Take a Hint, Danny Brown. I'm not surprised. I didn't love Get a Life, Chloe Brown. I didn't like the writing style. I didn't really like the characters or the romance. It wasn't really my thing. Um, but I was told to give Danny Brown a go because I had fake dating in it, but I'm... Um, Unfortunately, it just wasn't for me. So I did attempt to read that one. I've just DNF'd it, which is why it's got a cross. I read five unknown books, which I'm happy about. Definitely on track. I've read one page tune out of the two that I want to read. Definitely going to be on track because page tune has just got a new book out called Seven Summers, which I pre-ordered and has arrived. So that is actually on my hopeful April TBR. I haven't read a Mike Gale and I haven't read a Lucy Diamond, but I have finished my reread of the I Heart series. So Overall, I'm going really well with my 2024 reading goals. I'm definitely on track and I'm definitely kind of always referring to these now that I've written down in my reading journal at the front. I always kind of flip to it and kind of see where I'm at. So I'm definitely on track and I have confidence that I will complete all of them by the end of the year. 10 fantasy, maybe not so much if I stay in my slump because I know that romances are probably just easier for me to read whilst I'm in a slump, but we'll see how we go. Obviously, I've read 21 books, so that is perfect. I've actually so proud of myself that I managed to keep up with my pixel page so far um, and it's just really interesting to see what kind of like my reading patterns are like and as you can see a lot of light orange and yellows are where I'm not really reading too much and that's been quite consistent across March, had a little bit in the middle and then I managed to read a lot and then I had a little bit of a lull again and then at the end of March I really kind of hit my slump <laughs> and then that's continuing on to April so it's really interesting, it's quite sad that I've hit a lot of like low page reading days so far this year. I'm really hoping I can pick up the pace, um, but we'll see. Time time physical DBR it is probably at the highest that it's been so far this year. I think it's now around 40 books because I did a massive come bookshop for me video, which I'll link up above if you're interested in watching it. Hence why my books brought line is a lot higher than my books read in March. Oopsie. Hopefully I can rectify that across the next couple of months. My 2024 TBR was going really well at the beginning of the year. I've read one, two, three, four, five, six books off it. Um, and I've definitely kind of like taken a slower pace of it over the last month because of my reading slump. Um, so I'm really hoping I can get back to it soon. I've have attempted to read The Fortune Men, but I did DNF it. So I still only have a few more to read. Um, so we'll see how we go for there. But I do keep checking on this and making sure I at least have one of them on my TBR each month. I'm really, really happy with my social media growth so far this year, especially in March when I posted my Come Bookshop Me video. It kind of went a little bit bigger than I expected and I did gain a lot of new friendly faces. So if you're one of the new ones, hi, welcome. Thank you for sticking around. I really do appreciate it and I hope you enjoy the content. But yeah, it's just nice to kind of see a steady incline in growth um, and it's just nice to have it out visually. So I'm really excited to see where the rest of the year goes. Me and Mark have seen six movies so far this year. The worst one in terms of like what I hoped for and it just disappointed was Ghostbusters Frozen Empire. I loved the first one, uh, Afterlife with Paul Rudd. I love Paul Rudd, I love Friends, etc. Um, and I just had high hopes for Frozen Empire. It wasn't good. But in terms of like <laughs> unpopular opinion, I don't like Dune. I didn't like the first one. I literally just went to go see it with Mark because Mark loves it. I fell asleep. Dune was not good in my personal opinion. My favorite film, has been Iron Claw, which stars Zac Efron. It was a true one about the wrestling family and it was just really, really incredibly told story. Um, highly recommend it, lots of trigger warnings though. So those are all the movies we've seen so far. 
The TV shows, on the other hand, I've had very high success with. I've watched season two of Reacher, excellent, highly recommend on Amazon Prime. Mr Bates versus the Post Office, obviously a lot more relevant because of the ongoing cases that are still happening. So it's very much a true documentary on real events on ITV if you're in the UK. The Traitors season two, another incredible fun reality TV show on BBC. I know there's lots of different versions in different countries, but I'm talking about the UK one here. Masters of Air, which is on Apple TV. Uh, same kind of like family as Band of Brothers and Pacific with Austin Butler. Really highly recommend, a little bit slow at the beginning, but really does ramp up near the end. Amazing. Me and Mark being F1 fans, we watched a new season of Drive to Survive. Excellent, would recommend Netflix. Queer Eye season eight, I don't think a lot of people know, but there is a new season out and it's Bobby's last season with the Fab Five. So highly recommend watching that one. There's some really good episodes in there. Um, very much inclusive with one of them being a deaf football coach who works at a deaf school being one of the people that they end up helping. And then as of last night, we finished the latest season that we're up to of Survivor Australia, uh, Brain vs Brawn, which was incredible. So I added that one in this morning and I'm absolutely loving how this TV show page is coming out. And I thought 20 TV shows, 20 screens will be absolutely fine for the entire year. We'll just come out of the first quarter and I've already filled in one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, seven TV shows. So maybe I might have to replicate this page further on in my journal, but I'm absolutely loving how it's turned out. And I've watched some great TV so far this year. And it's just really nice to be able to reflect because usually I kind of forget what TV shows I'm watching. So it's nice to have a little recap of the ones I have watched. I'm very pleased to say I've now started my Walt Disney World countdown. It's 149 days today until I fly and I cannot be any more excited. <laughs> I'm just going to quickly go through kind of what's worked well, what hasn't worked well and what my favourite spreads have been so far in terms of my reading section of this journal. I absolutely loved, I think visually, how this spread came out. I think it's my favourite monthly dashboard to date because I really like my book covers being on the same page but I just knew I needed more space for them. So although I absolutely love it visually, it just wasn't working for me in terms of practicality. I knew I never wanted to have a full stats page again, which I've learnt from. I knew this didn't really work, so I didn't keep this on. I'm actually going to tweak how I do these in April, so stay tuned for that. But I, I like how they've come out and it's just been fun to kind of like write down my thoughts and feelings of books. I didn't really love this cover page, but it kind of worked well because I did binge Divine Rivals and Rupert's Vows in the month of February unexpectedly. So it's just nice. And, that my first five star is kind of like encapsulated by my monthly cover page. And every month since this February dashboard where I tried to merge my stats page of January and February together, it's kind of how I've just moved forward, but just tweaking it every month or so. Um, so not my favorite spread, but it definitely allowed me to progress into a spread that I really, really like, which I will show you at the end. Really liked how my February reads came out because they were bigger. I just had more kind of space to make them a little bit more detailed if I wanted to. I didn't, I think this is my least favorite spread. I actually know I have a least favorite. This is my second least favorite <laughs> spread that I've done. Still haven't reread any of those books. I need to get onto my rereading game. I love, love, love this cover page. I think it's my favorite cover page that I've done. This is how I adapted it and that's how it stayed. So this is how I really like my monthly dashboard to look like now, my pages, my TBR, my hauled, my stats. I think it's perfect. It encompasses everything that I want to see in a quick overview and I just really like how it's turned out. This is my least favourite spread. I don't know why I actually put it in because I knew I was never going to use it. I don't like only picking one book if I've had two 4.5 stars in a month. I don't like having to pick. Um, so yeah, this is a redundant page, probably my least favourite page. We can forget that one happened. We're on to April's spread, so I'll quickly do a sneak peek. I thought I'd do a bumblebee theme, so I don't love it, but it's cute. It'll do. <laughs> and once again, I've copied what I did in March because it worked so well for me in terms of my pages. I put prompts here because I'm doing prompt to prompt, so I just want to write a jot down of all the prompts that I get in my prompt jar. And then my stats, number of pages, average pages, best, worst days, how many physical ebooks and audio books I've read. And then a page to do all my books covers again. So, so far I'm really, really liking having a reading journal. It does get a little bit overwhelming sometimes if I don't keep on top of it and having to go back and amend and add to it in bulk can get quite intimidating, but I've kept up with it. I'm keeping, I'm trying to keep as consistent as possible and it's going well. I haven't reread any of these. So I feel like some point I should kind of do maybe at the halfway mark of the year, I'll go through 
once again my reading journal for you guys and I'll reread all of my summaries and just see if it sparks any kind of like conversation of the books I've read I think that'd be quite fun for like my mid-year reading check-in um so yeah I'm really liking how my spreads have come out my ferret spreads are definitely my pages and pixels my bookshelves and my January dashboard. We are now back on the floor for my final little segment that I want to do in this video and that is what I want to see coming up for myself and my goals in the next three months of the year so April, May and June quarter two of 2024. So what I personally want to see is my 2024 TBR come down in size once again. I started off really strong in completing a lot of the books that were on my 2024 TBR but I do feel like I've definitely let it slide now that I've kind of read the books on that TBR that were most interesting to me. And now there's definitely some books on there that I'm like, I don't really wanna read you right now or if ever. So it's getting a little bit more difficult to tick off those books now. And I do want to put focus back onto that TBR because I don't want to come to the end of year and not have read any of those books because I want to get them all off my TBR. So I don't definitely want a more main focus on reading more of my 2024 TBR. If I can get it down to only having a couple left by quarter three, that would be amazing. Um, so we'll see on that one. That is kind of like my next kind of like three month goal. Talking of TBRs, I also really want to focus on my iBooks TBR, which is obviously my Kindle countdown series I've spoken about in this video. I have definitely slacked. I was hoping that I'd have at least one of iBooks vlog coming your way every month so far and within that vlog have like two to three iBooks books and I would be finished with my iBooks TBR by now that was like my subtle kind of like plan it hasn't happened I've read two iBooks books in three months which isn't good because at this rate I will never treat myself to that Kindle and I do really 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 want one I know I can feel it in my gut that if I just got my Kindle now, my slump would be over. I'd be so excited to read on my brand new Kindle that my slump would be over and I'd just be reading all the KU books and I'd just be having my best life. But I know, <laughs> and I promised myself that I would read my iBooks TBR before getting a Kindle. And I know that if I just get my Kindle now, that will not, will not happen. And I know that there are some books on my iBooks account that I do really want to get to and I do want to read and talk to you guys about. So I'm holding off. But I do need to see that TBR come down in the next couple of months because otherwise that Kindle is never going to be mine and I really, really want it to be. <laughs> I really want my audio book ratio pie chart section to be higher because at the beginning of the year I was so good at reading one audio book a week. Like I said at the beginning, like listening to it on my commute to and from work and then finishing off on Saturdays or Sundays when I was doing chores with Mark. And I have some really fond memories of listening to some audio books this year and I just want to get back into that. I am currently listening to an audio book for my prompt to prompt challenge so stay tuned for my first prompt to prompt vlog coming next week for that. So I do think I'm slowly coming out of like my audio book slump. Um, but obviously just being a slump in general, it's just been a little bit harder. So I do really want to see my audiobooks continue to kind of like increase over the year, but especially over the next couple of months. And now we are in spring and almost coming into summer. I really want to focus on some of those favourite authors of mine that I have on my 2024 goals list, i.e. Paige Toon and Lucy Diamond. They're very much kind of like obviously women's chick lit authors, very much kind of like giving me the spring summer vibes. So I think it's a perfect time to tick off those goals from my 2024 goals list. Um, it's just a perfect time to read those books because they're, they just encapsulate spring and summer. So if I can get around to them sooner rather than later, that would be great. And my second page tune book will most likely be Seven Summers. Let me just get it quickly because it shouts spring and summer. Not only because of the title, but because of the cover. Isn't it a stunning cover? Um, and the blurb just sounds so much like Five Years From Now by Page Tune also. And that is my favourite page tune book. So I'm really, really, really hoping. I love it. Plus, if you didn't know, my favourite books tend to have the main character Olive in. And recently, my other favourite books have the main character Finn in it. And this follows the main character Finn. So I have really high hopes for this one. So I'm really hoping this is the page tune book that I can read in the spring. I really hope April, because uh, it has just come out and I'm really, really excited to read it. Um, and tick off my two page tune books and I would actually love to continue reading page tune and continue getting through her backlist because I do think she is the most consistently enjoyed author for me in terms of woman chick lit bar Giovanna Fletcher who also now thanks to Emily Kathleen Reads I do want to reread all her books but that is a separate goal and something I'm not giving myself because I know that I probably won't end up accomplishing it. Um, and then obviously I want to read my one Lucy Diamond book she isn't as a favourite as page tune 
but I do have some real favourites from Lucy Diamond and once again because she's a woman chick lit author she very much screams at spring summer time so I really would like to get to another Lucy Diamond. I don't know what that book will be but hopefully it's a good one because there aren't any on my physical TBR so it's gonna have to either be like an audiobook or I might treat myself to a book. I don't know but I'd love to get that goal kind of like underway in the next quarter of this year just so I can kind of tick some more goals off my list um, and that is my entire video I really really hope you enjoyed this video let me know in the comments down below what your favorite book of the first quarter has been I would love to know do we have any similarities I would love to know so let's chat in the comments down below if you enjoyed this video make sure you give it a massive thumbs up and subscribe down below to see future content from me I do anything from book videos journal videos reading vlogs anything your heart could desire I usually have on my channel so make sure you subscribe don't miss any and I'll see you in my next video bye guys